What is going on, my YouTube friends, my Patreon friends, my TWA? Hold on, my TWA friends. <laughs> Shout out to my friend Locked Wolf Man, y'all. Y'all got him hooked. Got him hooked. Um, my friend, my, I'm talking about all my friends here. My friend Terry, our friend Terry, TWA's friend Terry. Um, tagged me in this just a moment ago, and I just want to give him a shout out, man, for being like the most supportive, the most caring, like the most giving person I've met on this YouTube journey. Well, definitely up there, definitely up there for sure. Um, and uh, this, he told me to go nuts on this, so here we go. I'm gonna go nuts on this. Let me make sure that's on, and let's see what Danielle's got going on for her guitar rig. Let's do this. I haven't seen this yet. I am Danny from The Warning. I'm the guitar player and singer of the band. We're super excited to be headed out on tour, promoting our newest single, which is called More. Go ahead and listen yes. to it. And today, I'm gonna be taking you through one of my guitars. Well, a lot of them, but first this amazing PRS guitar. She's my baby. Beautiful. This is a custom 2408 um, guitar. She was my first PRS guitar, and I completely fell in love with her. Uh, during the pandemic, I was kind of like in this like dating uh, sense in guitars. I was really trying to find out where I was the most comfortable, and I found it right here with this beautiful baby. I, I take her everywhere. Um, she's been with me through a lot of tours, um, and this is like my main go-to guitar, which is super cool because if you see here, we have this is like the cool thing about the custom 2408 we have the split coils which you can have different combinations of pickups between so these are i'm i'm really out of shape for this but anyway these are doubles and if you split that it'll go down to like a single coil so like think think like les paul versus stratocaster almost like what's a little bit more twangy like prs is a really cool man i would recommend looking into the history of it and i'll paraphrase it and i'll butcher it a little bit but prs basically paul reed smith basically said that you know the gibson guitars were really, really nice but the headstock pitch was incorrect and the fenders were nice but the scale was incorrect or something like that so he tried to address both of those in a prs and they're beautiful guitars man um i had one same thing i dated it for a little while it was like purple purple man the whole thing was solid purple um, my buddy kevin had a bright orange one beautiful guitars man i'm so sad that i didn't keep it couldn't make it happen couldn't make it happen in all the different settings we humbucker have humbucker versus single coil pretty sure that's what's called double switch here and i did a little bit of modification this is really new but look at this if i click on this switch we get some led lights some LED in lights. here cool. for when everything goes dark i will not lose my way it's is very very cool you know even though we're a super rock and roll band most of my uh the tunings of the songs are in e standard uh, I usually go all the way in tone, all the way in volume, because I'm the only guitar on stage, so I want to be as loud as a, and as clear as possible. Also with the bridge pickups, and here, I used to like, I really like to use both my humbuckers to like the the most I can, right? I have some parts with cleans that I will go up here, uh, but usually I just leave it like that. I like to play that with that more around in the studio. But for live purposes, that's on and loud <laughs> on and loud. So like what she's talking about is she normally uses the bridge pickup, which is going to be like the brighter one. It's going to be more sibling. It sounds more like I'm just going to pick on like bands just because it's going to be sibling or familiar, um, more like ACDC sounding than like blues sounding per se. If you roll up to that uh, neck pickup here, it is a lot more bluesy sounding. So for like leads, like really shrill solos, um john mary kind of solos where they're lyrical you might want to go up to that bridge pickup or you could have that one whole like if it's a separate dial you could have that one turned down a little bit more so it's not as distorted and you can just use it for like clean sections especially if it's just like a couple chords while the crowd's singing along and you go back into the full section like it's an easy way to do that i just use mine as like a kill switch so it flip up to the front pickup and it's just off <laughs> like i didn't even use it uh for the same reasons just on and noisy in the studio is a different story um live just make some noise, man. Usually where I just like go all out. <laughs> For the strings, I use 1046. These are uh, the audio strings. NX, oh, NYXL, NYXL. I think I used my last um, pair. And yeah. We talked about that last time too. I used the same strings. Um, we used to take 
two sets of strings. So it was beefier, uh, the low three. And then the other set was a beefier high three. And we would blend them together so that you had like a thicker middle gauge string that you still play in E or E flat. Um, it was just like bitier and heavier, right? Um, but then New York XL came out with this string. New, like the XL is the extra large. They're all larger. So we didn't have to buy two packs to get the one set. Now we can just do the whole guitar off the one set. They're beautiful strings. Uh, the coated ones I don't like as much myself. And I could be talking out of my butt. They might all be coated. Um, but I'm pretty sure it was in that brand. I didn't like the coated as much. But I could be talking out of my butt. It has been a minute. So do your own research on that one. They're thinner strings because I have a, a tiny hand, but it's all good. They rock just as hard. So, yeah, those are they're, the strings. They're that really I... not that thin. Like, nines and eights are where it's getting real thin. Like, if, if I can go back to the ACDC reference, his strings were really thin. Um, Colin James and, oh my God, the other um, Texas Flood blues player. Oh my God, his, his brain or his um, name's slip in my brain right now uh played really heavy strings really heavy strings right so tens are like that's what we were going for like that's she's talking it down because you probably hear a lot of higher gauges in like the drop c tunings and stuff like that now because you need it to actually resonate whereas these thinner strings quote unquote won't do like a drop c tuning as well so that's that's all she's referencing man these are still heavy strings I use. So I really hope I don't cry when I tell you the story about this guitar. Lizzie Hale. So this is a Gibson Explorer that was gifted to me last year by one of my idols, Lizzie Hale. Um, it's an incredible story because I was waiting for a guitar change from my guitar tech mid-show and then I realized that he comes to take my guitar but he doesn't give me anything back and I was just like oh my god what's happening and then before I knew it Lizzie Hill comes running on stage with this guitar and just like hands it to me I was like you are kidding I thought she was lending me one of her guitars because it looks like really really similar but then after the show I was just like I couldn't believe it and she told me like that is for you and it was specifically made uh, with the things that you like your strings uh, the so pickups cool. which yes I love and honestly I still can't believe it I take it everywhere with me because one of the things that she says like it's for you please rock as hard as you can with it and that's what I plan to do I use this guitar too. it's gonna very make much me emotional too I love Lizzie Hale man I have for so 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 long because of her music the rest is just whatever extra. <laughs> um, but like, what a dope story, man. That is so cool. That's going to make me emotional too. Same as I use my PRS guitar. The only difference in this is that I had to like get used to this size of it. It's the huge. first The first day I played it, I already nicked it. Oh my God. It has some battle scars. I'm not used to the dimensions, but I love it. Hard to reach those high <laughs> frets right. too. This one Ooh, this has new. a very similar story to the Explorer, which is crazy to think about. I just got this last month from the one and only Matt Bellamy from Muse. Cool. They have been my idols since cool. I can remember. Oh, Muse too, man. Wow. One and only Matt Bellamy from Muse. They have been my idols since I could remember. And we were talking about guitars, and at one point he just goes like, what's your favorite color? And I was just like, I panicked, I just said yellow. <laughs> I was just like, but what kind of yellow? It's like mustard yellow. Before I knew it, I have a one-of-a-kind Manson mustard yellow cool. guitar. It's the only one that exists in this color. Uh, but the model is an Onyx uh, 6 because of the six strings. It's fairly new seven, in the Manson eight. world. I'm just trying it out. I'm testing it out uh, live to see what are the songs, what are the tunings that I can use on it. And overall, I'm still getting used to it, but it's gonna be my new best friend. I know it, we're gonna have great times together. And I also love the inverted headstock here. It's, it's just like, metal. ooh, nice. So overall, really, really love this guitar and I can't wait to play it more. I'm trying to remember what Manson was known for and it might be how the strings are set it might be something about the neck i can't remember someone let me know where are we at here we're about nine minutes 30 seconds someone let me know this is the pick that i use it's a big stubby <laughs> from dunlop and it's very it's funny pick. people usually this is usually a jazz pickup no. but i love how the grip feels on it it's too big for a jazz pick where's my picks i have a jazz pick it's too big for a jazz pick this is a jazz pick 
<laughs> this is a jazz pick. <laughs> They're just little. <laughs> like, and then this is an acoustic pick. We're getting closer to what Danny likes. And I don't think I have a bass pick. I used to play metal picks for a little while when I thought that was fun. Um, but no, like I play big picks. I play 1.14s, man. These are big picks. Triangles because I'm sloppy and they spin in my hand all the time. But it's a big pick, man. She plays bass picks. That is not a jazz pick. This is a jazz pick. <laughs> this is a jazz pick. And here, 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 here. One more. Don't leave me because of this. Don't leave me because of this. Look at the size. Look at the size difference. It's tiny. It's tiny. Come on, Daniela. Now, honestly, this is was made for me. Uh, even though the sound could be a little bit um, harder with other picks, I really like this one because I feel like at the end of the day, the more comfortable you are with what you're playing, the better. So That's it. Yeah. That's Welcome to my battle station. Camper this battle is station. a Kemper Profiler pedal board, uh, which I control every single song that I have on here. I have all the different titles of all of our songs. Oh, let me find our new single. Wait, wait, wait. There it is. More. What I love about this, it doesn't sound digital at all. No, I've it had not. different types of pedal boards throughout the years, but I love the Kemper because it's very, very uh, organic sounding. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, to build this beauty took me a while. The cool thing oh, about bet. the... Yeah, pro, it's like, it's basically programming, right? Like when I ran my Kemper, um, it was really cool how well it responded like an amp. Like if you let your strings go, it'll feed back like an amp, right? And you can play it through a, a playback monitor, like a, a feedback monitor, which I think she has like a, a couple oranges or something. I hope she goes through it. But like these oranges, like they have, or sorry, these Kempers have the orange official version of it. And like, you can almost hear the room still. Like it's, they're really cool, man. They're really, really, really cool. They're really expensive, but they're well worth it. This pedal board basically will run that whole brain that's on that little tiny thing. That's really neat. Amps and cabinets that I'm using is that they have been profiled. Uh, and those are David Bendit's amplifiers and cool. the ones that we use to record our latest album because he was our Very producer. Cool. And I love that I can use the exact sound that I had for the recording and give a new life for the live version. So that is absolutely amazing to me. I usually have... And like, you know, more is a great example of that where I argue that it still sounds like a warning song. It just sounds like a warning song. I might catch more like played to it, like more broad audience, I guess. Um, but when they play it live, you could use the same tones and turn it into a friggin' metal song. Like that MTV one, right? Was wild, man. That like she had no business making that tone that disgusting <laughs> in the best way. <laughs> but like if that's a same or the similar amp or whatever, that is one less hurdle for us to get over to like enjoy the listening experience. And in my personal experience or my personal taste or whatever opinion, I think the live was ridiculous, man. Ridiculous. Four different settings. We have the clean one. I go to my main one, and my main one are the chunky ones. That's are the the things I used to do my palm mute, so they're a little less uh, behind in gain, so that they don't feedback a lot. Then I have like my big uh, sound, which usually I add a harmonizer to it. Which I I'm only the only guitar on stage, so I like to have a low octave as well, so I can just kind of grow super big, and that's my whammy one. I usually have a bridge one which has a little bit more delay and reverb on it so that it kind of like breathes a little bit more and that's usually all that I do in basically each song. Cool. I actually have some songs. So I wonder if she's doing the time delay thing anymore or if she's avoiding that. That I love to play with the ex I think I like to my ear it still sounds like she's doing the time delay thing and I don't know why you would get rid of that man because it is perfect for this band. Fashion pedal and just going an optic higher so I would just like play a note and go mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and in solos that's really really cool. I don't use a lot of whammy in general for solos. It's just not uh, my thing but here is where I use it. I do not have a guitar plugged in. I'm just realizing that, so I can't show you. But in this one, <laughs> I use the expression pedal a lot for that. Since I'm so like the expression pedal, you can do a lot of different things with. For her, she'll use it for adding the octave down to what she, she's ever playing. So it's just like it'll take all the harmonics, everything, just add the octave below. But she'll also have the octave or octaves up. So depending on where she wants that to be, like if it's big and beefy or if it's like really shrill and shreddy, like she'll choose which side of it she wants. So it's either pedal down 
is the octave down, pedal up is the octave up. And in the original expression pedals that did that, like if you were in between, you could hear it all. It felt like a theremin or something like that. But anyways, she might have it set to like it only changes at 100% and at zero um, or however they kind of talk. But I'm already using an amp over here. I do not find the necessity of having one here, but I love to hear my amp on stage. I love to feel the sound of the guitar. So I usually go through this pedal baby, which is just a preamp into the cab so I can have my sound here. And cool. the pedal board goes straight into the front of house console and just blasts it out through the PA. Thank you for watching everybody. You can watch our content on The Warning Rock Band on Instagram. We're The Warning on Facebook and everywhere else. So thank you so much and keep on rocking. Keep on rocking. Cool, man. So it sounds like, or it looks like she has made a few changes since the last breakdown video I did of her guitar rig. Uh, but it looks like the core of it is still the same. It's interesting to hear like the the harmonies or the layers up, the layers down stayed. Um, her amp on stage is more of like a feel thing, but I did see that there was a microphone on it. Like, if you're going to bring a 412 out and put a preamp on it, make it sound good, like why wouldn't you put a microphone on it? And like she said, she's the only guitarist on stage, so you have to be clever about how you make it big and obnoxious right so i dug it man i thought that was really cool thank you so much terry for tagging me in this twa i appreciate you all hanging out and supporting all my friends too we'll see you all on the next one